we've had a full week of just hunting and cooking. It's just been incredible. These episodes are going to be for the Armed Forces Entertainment. On this particular one, we've got a gentleman here named Wade. He's a shooting instructor. We're going to see how we do, man. I'm looking forward to it. I might have a little smack talk, a little wager going on between me and Bob. We're going to go out to the crossbow, and uh, me and DJ, man, we're going to try to nail this deer, man. We had to work for it. We did. We made a great shot. You know the best part about hunting on E3, Mo? Now DJ has to drag him out. I was just about to say, Kurt, just grab that deer. <laughs> <laughs> We've already started the clipping process on a lot of different uh, cuts. Now we're gonna to get to the beautiful back straps. I'm gonna make a sauce that complements these deer. And then at the end, my man Bob made some beautiful chimichurri, and we're gonna put that right on top. So it's gonna be fantastic. My name is Mo Kaysan. I love barbecue, that's my MO. Managing the fire, flavors, textures, smells, I always was fascinated by it. I'm out here with my buddy Bob. I am Barbecue Bob Trudnack. Thrilled to be here. Woo! I like shooting. <laughs> and I like hunting. Quick, quick. Heart was just pounding. I'm gonna shake it. It's awesome. We're gonna do a little pheasant hunting. I got that. <laughs> What's up, boy? Get the hell out of here! You caught fish oh, already! Take your butt back to Pennsylvania, boy! Learn cooking techniques, recipes, how to fill strip a deer, and even prep wild turkey. It's gonna be a great experience. We're gonna do it most style. <laughs> Adam's got a beautiful range that's got, you know, 300, 700, 800,000 yard. We had a group of guys in and Wade came in. Wade and Mo hit it off. Uh, Mo found out that Wade was a long range instructor. So when we had some downtime, Wade walked him through the art of long range shooting. Him and Adam both sat down with me uh, and taught me more in the time I was here than any other time of shooting. And from then on out, Every time Mo's been back, he's asked about Wade. I've been looking forward to this trip. I've been looking forward to meeting Wade again because I've learned so much, and he, he allows me to be a better hunter um, by being a better shooter. And so I brought a couple of my toys down here. Tomorrow we're going to go out, and uh, roachie has got uh, mile target, thousand yard target, and then various targets down below there. Let's see if we can uh, get those thousand yards. My buddy Bob's with me, so. Um, we're gonna see how we do, man. I'm looking forward to it. I might have a little smack talk, a little wager going on between me and Bob. Lansdale against Des Moines. What's up? <laughs> yeah, I think it's good. Right on, right on, Wade. We did some practice shots to get everything zeroed out at 100, and then we went out to his platform. Got a little competition here between the two barbecue masters. <laughs> They've both been shooting great, so this could be a tight one. Him and I had a timed competition to hit 100, 200, 400, 500, and 620. I also have a gun that with a scope that's meant for like 30 yards. Yeah. No, it's, it's more than 30 yards. I mean, okay, long. sorry, 42. Six fire is fine. On you, Bob. Okay. Yeah. Hit, target two. Hit, target three. Hit, target four. Just low. Hit, last target. Way low. Just short. Great windage. Oh my God, just low. Hit, time. 259? Yeah, good run. Let's go, Mo. Get that cash ready. Got it. There you go. Second target. Got it. Third target. 
On the right side of that lane, Mo. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. There's one. Yeah. Oh! My God. He's catching up. Fourth target. What's his time? What's his time? Hit. Last target. Oh, just missed it. I think left side. Ah, I'm out of ammo. Oh no, throw another one in it. Come on. Oh, give me one of those. Uh, what do you need? Oh, get, yeah, work? Yeah, it's a work. Here we go. Just slow. Aim a little higher. Left edge. No. Aim higher. Come up a little more. Off to the right. Hit! Hit! What's his time? 4.37. Woo! <laughs> Victory is mine! He's probably not going to bring this up in conversation, but um, although he was shooting very well today, I happened to beat him in the uh, in the time to shoot. Well, you ended up with a single shot anyway. Good job, buddy. Dude, look how bad I was sweating during that. I'm covered. This is what we do before every hunt. We that is have a photo killing, session. That is a coyote gun. Yeah, so Mo's done more rifle hunting than anything. And there's obviously a huge difference, you know, when you start talking about archery hunting. So realize the, the kind of the different arts there in, in the two techniques. I am going to kill a deer tonight, for sure. <laughs> My man, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Taking my pit master out to kill us a deer. But somebody tells me they can they know how to smoke deer. I don't believe it. We'll find out. Here's what I know. If it's meat and either one of them are cooking it, I'm eating it. What we got going on here? Uh, this would be a uh, DJ left the light bar on while they hunted. Go wait a little bit. Go rev the engine up a little bit. Make sure you got good contact. We were wondering why the deer kept looking back here while we were in the stand. That's Jeez. what they were looking at was the light. You got mud on my truck, dude. You're gonna wash it, right? Hey, we're about to get blood on your truck. Did you get it in? Because Big Mo got him a dick. Yeah, baby! Woo! Woo! You get your dough or butt? Big, big dough. That's all right. We, we got yeah, some meat. Yeah, Give us up. Yeah, yeah. She, she, she was, uh, took a while for her to come in, man. It's like three of them, man. They worked their way on the back in the paddock and they finally worked their way up, worked their way up. And I had to open up that little side window, man. It was kind of awkward, you know, but I got a good shot. She on did, her. right? Yep, yep. Just ran right on the timber a little bit and she stood there and he got it all on film, man. It was pretty cool, man. And she started rocking and she just... She didn't go 20 yards. Good, good. That's the way they're supposed to do. She's going to go down right there. Holy cow, man. Good job, Big Mo. Good job, Big Mo. Thanks. Proud of you, brother. Thanks, Glad man. you got it. Yep. My first deer with a crossbow and uh it's awesome man it's a great experience and the buck commander tradition <laughs> yes right is what <laughs> we call, oh. call that the tombo i love it <laughs> i love it 
<sighs> you know the best part about hunting on E3, Mo? Is now DJ has to drag him out. I was just about to say Curtis grabbed that deer. <laughs> <laughs> shot a beautiful deer uh, yesterday, got it all trimmed out. So we've already started the cooking process on a lot of different uh, cuts. Now we're gonna get to the beautiful back straps. We've got a French style with the rib bone still attached, which is beautiful. And then we just got the regular old, good old back straps here. And uh, they're trimmed up really nice. Bob did an excellent job of getting them all trimmed up. And DJ, I'm gonna make a sauce that complements these deer. And you can use this sauce on beef, you can use it on pork loin, pork, a lot of things. It's really good. It's a very savory sauce that complements the protein without overmasking it. So basically I call it my cognac sauce because that's what it is. So you take a couple sticks of butter, a cup and a half of cognac. Now you don't have to get the high-end cognac because it's just cooking. You're just cooking with it. You have this on low simmer. You do not want a raging your pot on fire because this is alcohol. And if you get something splashed over, you can actually literally cause a fire. So you just want to make sure low simmer. I'm going to use about a quarter cup of low sodium Pickleman's soy sauce. I like low sodium because it's not as salty. And then we're going to do about three tablespoons of Dijon mustard. I'm partial to the, uh, the grapefruit pond, but you can use whatever you, you like. So I just go one, two, three. Good way to measure it. Now, I'll take a little bit of my uh, beef rub, and I'll just probably three teaspoons. That's about all I use. The deer is gonna be already seasoned, so you know you don't need to be keep piling and piling on a lot of different things. This is gonna be a savory element that's gonna coat the outside of that deer, along with the beef seasoning that you're gonna have on it. It's gonna be a really delicious, savory piece of cut. And then I'm gonna take some green onions. And it all depends on how much green onion you like. Um, this is about uh, a little over a quarter of a cup. And that's it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this up and I'm gonna slowly melt the butter and incorporate and melt all the flavors together. And I know it's done is when the green onions become somewhat translucent. And then once this gets done, we're done. We set it off to the side. If it's really cold outside, it might start to try to you know, solidify because the butter in it. So you want, might want to pick it up and leave it on your stove and just kind of keep it at room temperature so that it's still um, in a liquid state. You thicken it all? No, I don't need to thicken it up. It's just okay. the, the butter there. It would just kind of meld the, uh, all the flavors together and then uh, get the, the, the green onions to where they're translucent. So next thing we do is we're going to take uh, this venison. I'm just going to season it up. I mean, 125, 128, that's all you want to go with it. You don't want to overcook it because what happens is deer does not have marble, as you can see. It's just beet red. That is nothing but moisture and tissue. There's no marbling in it. So you want to make sure you do not overshoot and cook all the moisture out of this deer. That's when you end up having deer that's tough. Uh, some people use mustard, some people use EBO. I use canola oil. I love using spray canola oil because it sprays out evenly on the meat. But you can use liquid, you know, uh, where you can just buy it in a bottle and just kind of pour it on and rub it with your hands. And what's great about oil, it's a binder. It's also a lubricant. So it's going to keep the surface of that meat moist during the cooking process. And then next thing you know, it's just simple. You just take your favorite rub. This happens to be Mo on beef rub. You don't have to get real crazy with the, with the coat. You just kind of put a nice little coat on each side. Now the thing with my beef rub, it has uh, salt, pepper, and garlic. And then it also has some other things too, like coriander, but there's those little things that make the difference in the flavor of a rub. It's the things like orange peel, lemon peel, or coriander, or cumin. Those are things that give the rub characteristics. Now Bob's got his shotgun smoker up, fired up nice and hot. And see, all we're going to do is we're going to hit these. And I've got a I've got a thermal pin that's going to tell me the internal temperature. You want to make sure that you always want to shoot for medium rare when it comes to to, uh, to deer, unless you're doing something in a crock pot where you're cooking it all day long and it's just surrounded by liquids. Now, right before that, I'm going to hit it with this cognac sauce. So now my sauce is melted and, 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 and melted real nice. I'll just turn off my heat, 
and I'll get a ladle and I'll put it as this deer is cooking. We're gonna cook it on um, one side and then we're gonna flip it. And once I flip it, I'm gonna hit it with this sauce. And then at the end, my man Bob made some beautiful chimichurri and we're gonna put that right on the top. All right, let's get these on. A thing you don't want, you do not want to overcook deer. You just, especially if it's backstrap, man, you just want to basically grill them off, get some flame kiss on them, and then take them off, man, because that's all it takes. Beautiful, delicious, cooked to perfection. Medium rare, the smell coming off of this meat is just awesome. I mean, you can smell the onion, the cognac, you can smell the rub, you can smell the, the grilled char over cooking over flames. It's just awesome. So the final step we're gonna do this is, my good friend Bob made this killer chimichurri, and we're gonna drizzle the chimichurri on top of your backstrap. Cognac sauce smells amazing. I know. Money. Come on, man. That's the way you cook. Huh? That's right. That's how you cook medicine, man. It's just awesome. Good work, man. Good work, buddy. I know you guys want some.